<laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and here we are going to be performing a Switch Joy-Con reshell. I've done this several times at this point, and I figured I would show you all at least how I do and maybe give some tips, tricks, pointers, all that fun stuff. So we're going to be needing a few things here. And uh, another thing as well too, if you're going to be following along with this as a tutorial, I mean, that's what this is for, but I'd recommend if you're kind of iffy on this, uh, make sure you watch this video and see if this is something you really feel comfortable doing. I'm gonna do my best to describe everything and see what's going on, but let's just tear right into this. So first of all, you're of course going to need your pair of Joy-Con. Uh, also, since we have these things open, I actually have a separate video covering just how to address and fix the Joy-Con drift, which is just replacing the sticks right here. But in all honesty, you don't really need to watch that video if you're watching this one. In my opinion, if you're gonna have these things open, you might as well just buy some new analog sticks as well too, um, and just replace them while you're in here. So that way you don't have to you know, open up shortly after if let's say you start getting Joy-Con drift here really soon. So, we're going to need that. We're also going to need a kit as well too. This is my nice little like smoke gray kit, uh, but really anything is going to work on this. And the one I got ended up get having a D-pad, so that'll be nice to check out, certainly. But there's a few tools that I recommend you have, and I, I pretty much have it down to four. Uh, first of all, I am using a iFixit Pro Toolkit. Um, that works for me, it's just worked for a while, but the four things I really end up using is a spudger like this. Uh, I also use some kind of electronic tweezers in a way, just I guess tweezers, that's what you would call them here. Uh, and then your bits. You'd need a screwdriver, of course, but the two bits you're really going to need are a Phillips Zero and a Tri-Wing Zero. Uh, those will be the two to get in and do everything you need to. So once you have those two bits and these two tools right here, you are pretty much all ready to go on this. So let's go ahead and tackle this here. Now. I'm gonna move all these to the side. I already have my tri-wing set up. And the first one we're gonna do here is we're gonna do the right Joy-Con. And the reason why I'm gonna do this one and show it to you all is because the right Joy-Con, in my opinion, is the harder Joy-Con to work on. Um, honestly, if you can do the left one, you can do the right one just fine. And the right one is just harder because it has more stuff inside of it. Uh, but let's go ahead and get this thing ripped open. So we just have to flip it upside down. And there's gonna be four tri-wing screws that you can immediately find. And if you're confused at all on, you know, screw orientation right here, we're just gonna go righty-tighty, lefty-loosey on all of this. So you just need to get these four. Once you get them, you're inside successfully. Now, I'm not going to be replacing the, um, the sticks on these because I have already done so, but here we go. Now, once you're here, what I'd recommend doing is you can take your spudger tool, kind of come up the top, separate, and kind of want to do like a turnkey thing, just like this. It opens up like that. And then you can kind of come around the bottom, do about the same thing, and when it pops like that, you're inside. So now when you're inside, you want to kind of open this up gently, and there we go. So we are on the inside of the Joy-Con. So first of all, let's go ahead and disconnect our battery. This is going to just be for safety purposes. Uh, what you need to do here is you need to find your battery, find the wire that's connecting, and it's set up on a connector right there. You kind of just want to use a tiny bit of force. And it disconnects like that. You really barely need to use anything when you do that. Now to remove the battery itself, because we're going to do a complete reshell here, so we have to do this. I kind of come down here, and I take my spudger, and you don't want to pierce your battery at all. You kind of just want to move it away a bit. Kind of just do something like that, because there's two little strips of adhesive here. And this one here is a little bit strong, at least on mine, so you kind of just want to go slow and remove that. And then once it's all removed, you want to put your battery to the side because you will need that later, of course. But here we go. So now at this point, there's going to be a few things that we can tackle here. It's going to be three screws, and this is where we switch over to a Phillips head. But either way, what we can do is come over here, use our spudger before we have to unscrew anything. And the ZR button, I like to just remove this. And I'm actually going to 
zoom in for you all while we're looking at this here. I like to remove this to make it a little bit easier. So here, you kind of just want to come under, do a bit of a turnkey motion, and you want to be very careful because there's two springs that are underneath here. So you just want to make sure they don't fly all across your room. And when you remove that, there you go. You got the ZR, and you got the two springs. So there's actually going to be another hidden screw under there. Now at this point, you can switch over to your Phillips head. So that's exactly what I'm doing here off camera. So you need a Phillips Zero screwdriver, as I said, and you're going to want to remove this silver screw. There we go. And we're not going to disconnect that, but we're just going to move it out of the way. And then you're going to want to remove the three gold screws. One, two, three. That's where they're all located. All right. So now once all that's removed, there's also going to be, you'll see this antenna right here. You can kind of move that out of the way. Once you got that, you can remove it. And here we go. So we have this entire piece right here available to us. And this I would not recommend just to make things easier for us. I'm not going to recommend you disconnect this at all. Just, just keep that connected for the time being, for actually the entire install here. Uh, if you want to remove the antenna here, you can as well too. Just remember where it goes, you just reconnect it. Uh, but either way, this is important because there's a few other things that we can unclasp, which let's just do everything. So here there's going to be several ribbons. And first of all, let's get rid of the Joy-Con rail. So we're going to... Just come here, disconnect that, and we're going to remove it gently. Now this one right here, we have to come around the back, and we're going to unclasp it like that, and then just pull it away, and there we go. So now that's completely separated. All three plastics are separated. Now I can come over here, and there's... Uh, actually, there's going to be three that we're going to do. So this is going to be for your actual like Joy-Con like analog stick here. And if you want to replace this, this is actually a really good opportunity to do so while you have this all open. But if not, you can just go in here, disconnect. And even if you don't pull it now, it's fine. We're going to unscrew that. So we've already released it. This right here, we're also going to release. And this, we're going to release as well. We are not going to disconnect the uh, the rumble. We don't have to disconnect the antenna. You can if you want to. And we're not going to disconnect the ZR button. So we don't have to do that. However, this button here, the R button, there's going to be another uh, spring loaded right there. You want to be very careful. So you can kind of just take that out and remove it like so and keep that to the side. And there you go. So this is, I'm just going to refer to this as the motherboard, but we can kind of put a pause on that for now because this is at a pretty good spot I want to be at. So what I actually want to do is I want to transfer over what we need for the bottom plastic right here because we can finish this up pretty easily now. So go ahead and move those over and we can now unbox our kit and see what we have. Now depending on what kit you have, uh, you might get, I would hope you'd get buttons like this. Mine actually has a D-pad and uh, it has a D-pad and also has uh, SR and SL buttons. So we're going to be swapping all of those out. Uh, it also has these color buttons for A, B, X, and Y. So I'm going to swap those out. And it has these screws. And I'll be honest, I never use the screws that come with these kits. I prefer to just use the Nintendo screws. So those ones I'm going to keep to the side. But now I'm going to pull out wherever the right one is. And now the funny thing is, because this is kind of like translucent smoke, it might be a little bit difficult to see. Uh, but regardless, this is, this is what we're working with here. All right, so it's going to be... A little something like that. Hopefully you all can see these just fine. So first of all, we need to remove the Joy-Con rail completely, which this is very simple to do. It only has one screw. So you find the silver screw, you unscrew it, and actually I can just keep that right there for now. And you remove the Joy-Con rail. Now there's the button to release your Joy-Con. You want to take this button out and you want to transfer it over. And this is going to be our first button that we're going to change out. And the cool thing is uh, all these buttons are like notched and keyed. So 
when it fits, like you can't really do this improperly uh, for anybody who's afraid of that. You really have to try your hardest to do that because when, when it fits properly, it's just gonna go in. There's only one way each of these buttons can fit anywhere on the controller, which is great. So there we go. So we have that already set up. We can now put this over to the side because we have to do a little bit of extra maintenance right here on um, on our Joy-Con rail. Because with this kit, it ended up coming with replacement SL and SR buttons. Again, that might depend on which kit you are using. Mine has that. So here, there's just two screws that you're going to remove. These are two gold screws. That's one, which I'm gonna put over here. That's two. And right here, you just want to gently remove that. And here you go. You got these two buttons. So now let's go ahead and grab a set of SL and SR buttons. And this will just be easy enough to find. So again, the nice thing is these are keyed. So I'm not really going to go into detail of, oh, which one should go where, because I mean, it's gonna be really obvious here. Uh, but either way, when you remove these buttons, this is gonna be, well, you know what? That just flew all over. And that, this is gonna be the same for everything here. So this, for example, you just remove whichever button you want. It's going to have, you know, the membrane right here, just the little rubber piece. And you're gonna transition that rubber piece over to your new button. Unless you end up buying replacement, you know, rubber pieces there, uh, which you can if you want to, but I know mine are just fine. So the stock ones I'm going to be putting over to the side because I no longer need them. But let me go ahead and grab another one here. So I'm going to disconnect that. I'm going to load this one in. And I mean, this is this is not really the, the hard part here by any means, so I'm not going into major detail on this portion, you know, just swapping your buttons over. But either way, we now have brand new uh, SL and SR buttons installed. By the way, you might you might do what I did here and you might have accidentally knocked off the sync button, uh, which is an incredibly important button to have and you don't want to, you know, knock that off. You want to make sure everything is in sync. That that's good. That's that's healthy. So, once you have that all in place, it would be good to take that button just pop it back in like so. And none of these kits that I have used have had a replacement sync button at least. It's always SL and SR. Either way, you want to just put this back in where it was supposed to be. All right, so here we go. Once we have that all set up, you just want to take your two gold screws that you removed. You want to put them in place and screw them back into the only two screw holes here. Perfect. So now we're going to take our bottom plastic piece. We're going to put in, make sure that button's still there. You want to make sure you did not lose that. You can put in the rail like so. And now you also want to take your screw. I should have done this prior, but either way, you want to do this. You want to pop it over here. And there we go. So once you have that all screwed in, that is about how your Joy-Con rail should be looking. Now it might look a little bit loose and that's fine because it only has one screw that we're putting in. So it's a little bit imbalanced right now, but that, that's that's A-OK, -okay, I would say. Okay, let me just back off on the, uh, on the tightness a little bit here. Now, either way, I mean, the work on the bottom one is done. The bottom piece is all good. That's all swapped over, so that's great. We can keep that over on the side. And at this point now, I want you to grab the rest of your Joy-Con, this is gonna be the, the top of it here. And we're gonna continue working on this one. So we still have all of our screws over there, that's all fine. And one of the easy parts, let's go ahead and remove this here. This is going to be our actual analog stick. So there's two gold screws. There's gonna be one, and there's gonna be two. And this should just come up just fine if you've already released the class, but if you haven't, you know, make sure you have this released right here. Kind of going to want to finagle with that a little bit. Gently disconnect. And there we go. Now I'm going to keep that safely over to the side because I don't want to get rid of that because I just replaced it. It's literally a brand new one. So now at this point, there are two more screws. There's these two silver ones. 
That's one silver screw. That is two silver screws. And we can gently lift up on this. And we should have it all there. But we're also going to need to, now that we have that lifted, we will need to remove our motor here, which these are going to be, it's going to be your IR sensor as well as your motor. These are going to be secured in. It might even be a little helpful if you can like move the motherboard a bit out of place as well too. Uh, just don't go crazy with it, but once we have all that disconnected, my buttons are actually coming out. There we go. So we have all of that. That's my home button. It's just going to be hanging out there. Kind of just take even our spudger if we need. There we go. So you might have to finagle with that a little bit, as I said. But that's all out. And the next thing we're going to need to remove is the IR sensor, which you're going to see that's also part of a ribbon as well too. It's just you want to be careful. And underneath there is adhesive. So you want to just gently remove that. There you go. So we are all good at that point. If you had to disconnect it, that, that's A-OK -okay there. But there we go. So we have the motherboard, we have the uh, rumble motor, we have the IR sensor all removed at that point. OK, so from here, we can go ahead, remove the rubbers, and we can actually work on, I'm going to move all those parts over because we can actually begin uh, work on getting this into the top part. So here we go. Now, one thing of note with my kit, uh, it does not have, there, there are two buttons we need to transfer over. We need to transfer over the home button right here. So that's just gonna be like so. And everything is just gonna work like that. You're just doing the same orientation. There's also going to be this button right here. This should be the plus button. This needs to go over here. Again, just make sure that's keyed in and pushed in properly. With these really small buttons here, uh, you can also even use your tweezers like this to kind of get them into better shape here. It looks like this should be, f nope, and it ended up going the other way. That is fantastic. That's just how it is when you're working with these little tiny buttons. Either way, we have all of that put in like so. You can check it from the bottom. So those are the two buttons that are not going to um, are not going to come with this kit. Uh, however, the other ones right here, uh, A, B, X, and Y, do come with the kit. So I'm going to be replacing those. So these old buttons I'm not going to be using anymore. And let me just transfer over this piece right here. This is for the plus button. That has been transferred over successfully. All right. And we're going to do the same thing here. This is going to be our A button. And I notice it kind of helps because you're, if you're doing this on a flat surface, it helps to kind of have a little bit of an indention there. Uh, but either way, we have all of that. We got an X button. Now, I don't want to spend too much time focusing on that, but pretty much once you have that transferred over, uh, this is going to be notched out as well, too, where these two lines are going to be like side to side here. So. You just want to pop that in place as well. Make sure it all fits. And this is where you'll be able to tell if they're fitting because if any of the buttons are raised up like that one right there, I know for example, right now immediately, I did not put in the A button properly or it came loose like it did right there. So we're gonna do the exact same thing here. Pop this all into place, just like that. There we go. So now, I'm actually gonna remove these old buttons because I just don't wanna get 
confused by that. And there's going to be, if you can see it here, there's kind of this like, th there's two black plastic. There's a kind of black membrane, so to speak. And there's a black plat or adhesive and there's a black plastic piece. And you're going to need the both of them. So the membrane is going to have to, or not the membrane, the, um, the adhesive is going to have to go underneath. So at least what we can do here is we can get the plastic. We're kind of just going to find a way to easily disconnect it. We don't want to bend this because it's actually, it's not even plastic. It's more metal, if anything. There we go. So we got that there. We're now going to transfer it over. And we'll just put it in the same spot. And again, it's notched. So like right there, right there. That should all be going and fitting in just fine. But that's how it's supposed to go. Before we do that, we need to bring over our adhesive piece. So this is going to be our adhesive from the old stock Joy-Con. We're going to bring this over to the new one. While we make sure we don't mess with any of our buttons. So we got that there. That's all good. That is great. Awesome. It's a little better to do this outside. So we're actually going to do some building outside of this and we're going to pop it back in. So this is what we'll do. We're going to grab our motherboard. That's what I'm going to call it. And we're now going to actually connect that black plastic piece or the, the black piece there to the motherboard. So you want to get it into this ribbon right there. Make sure it's connected properly. And then you want to clasp it shut. So you make sure it stays connected just fine. You can even double check that if you want to. Like I'm going to do it right there. Should be safe. There we go. It's all good. So we have that. Next up, I would even recommend getting the, uh, the IR sensor right here. So it's going to go a little something like this. It's going to kind of come sneaking up like that right there. You're going to want to do the same thing. You want to just, you know, pop it into place and then we're going to clasp it shut. If you want to use your tweezers here, you're more than welcome to do that. You can do anything you want to to make this easier as long as it's not destructive. That is what I would say. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn this at a bit of an angle just so it's easier for me. Uh, hopefully it's still visible just fine on video, but this will be easier for me while I'm setting this up to look at it and actually see it go into place because the way this setup is, it's a little bit difficult here. And this should actually go just above that. So you should see here, there's going to be like the black metal there. The ribbon is going to go on top for the IR and then it's going to go clasped inside. So there we go. Once you have it in position, you can then close the shut and that's it. So we have this partially built outside. That, that's what I call this here. Now we're going to bring the plastic piece over. This is the, uh, you know, the, the top part of the Joy-Con. I'm going to start transitioning this all over. So first of all, this needs to go in here. If you can set that up, we're also going to need to kind of pop the motherboard back in place. A lot of this kind of all happens at once, <laughs> but uh, we're going to get the IR sensor right there. Gonna stick it all in place. We're going to get the rumble motor just above that. So that should be nice and snug in there. So I kind of just had to verify this a little bit off camera and I had to push it in a bit. But once it's all like kind of pushed in and clicks, then you should be good at that point. Um, we, we have most of the hard work done there, thankfully. So now we can start screwing everything back in at this point. You really just want to work backwards. So at this point here, there's going to be the two silver screws you're going to need. And one of them is not there. One of them is going to go right here. So you just screw that in. The other one is going to go right here. And once you get these two screwed in, you don't want to go like super tight on them, right? I'd also recommend doing a button test. 
just to make sure that all the buttons are feeling just fine. Um, this one, the home one, is not going to be fully secured, but these ones should be secured pretty well at this point. So now we have all that set up. That is awesome. That is great. We can now take our stick here, our analog stick. I want to pop this in and you can either put that in before or after. I'm actually going to, you know, it's fine. I'm actually just going to screw it in now because I'd rather do that. It really doesn't matter. It's kind of more up to preference. But from here, you want to take the two gold screws that you had extracted from here. And you're going to use those to screw this back in. All right, so once all of that is there, from here we can take our ribbon before we forget and kind of just load it up in here, like so. And there we go, that's all loaded up. So now we can clasp that shut, perfect. All right, everyone, so right now we're in a pretty good spot, I would say, so now we can actually, it's gonna get a little bit kind of messy when we're redoing this here. But uh, we can actually finish up with some of the last ribbons uh, because that's all connected in. But here, we're going to need to connect the two ribbons that we will need uh, for the Joy-Con rail. So these are pretty simple. There's one right there. There's one right here. Make sure they've both been released. And from here, you really just, I would say these are the hardest ribbons in all honesty. And I'm not saying that to scare anyone, but that's just like my opinion here. I just think these ones are the hardest ones. You kind of just want to go in, do a little something like that, get all connected, and we can clasp it down. I'm just using my thumb for that. And that looks to be perfectly fine. The next thing we can do is do with this one right here. So we're just going to, again, go in like so. Once you have that all plugged up, and there's gonna be like a symbol that you'll see for that as well too. You can have that there. And there we go. So we have those two ribbons all done. We're also going to need the R button. So there's kind of like a notch right here. Remember, that's where the spring has to go. And there's kind of like a notch where the spring needs to be like a wall for it, so to speak. And you want to just kind of set it in like that. Do a test. And if it's all working, that's fantastic. So now we can start doing the, uh, the final part here, which would be the battery or the battery holder. So you're going to kind of put it in just like that. And this is where it really helps to have the uh, the work done with the Joy-Con rail before. Because I know this looks a little bit messy right now, but like, trust me, this is going to make it easier. Uh, so you want to pop it in like that. There we go. And I think it would be good to secure this down. So this is where you're going to need your three gold screws. You should only have three gold screws left if you've done this properly. But one is going to go over here. One of them is going to go over here. If possible. There we go. And finally, a third one is going to go over here. There we go. Once you have it all secured in place, you can then take your final silver screw. We're going to take, you know, this button that's attached to our ribbon, notch it all in place. That's where the screw hole is. We're going to screw it in and get it secured. And there we go. So you want to make sure again, like nothing is pinching or anything. And thankfully I can check my work because this is like pretty translucent. Uh, but now this is where we need to take our uh, I don't know if I can find it here 
This is where we need to work with our uh, ZR button. All right, so I apologize about this part here, and this might not be the best representation, and this also a reminder, maybe not do this late at night here, uh, but I actually end up losing one of these springs here, unfortunately. I am not sure where it's at right now, but we're just gonna have to roll with it here. So really, when you're getting these springs reinstalled, there's going to be two little nubs. There's gonna be one right here and one right here, and each of those springs, well, each of those is going to house a spring. And you're pretty much wanting to connect it to where each one of the nubs is on the bottom of your ZR. So I'm gonna do the best I can to kind of show it at least with one here. I'm just gonna pop one in because it's better to have one than have none, I suppose. I'm gonna put it in like so. You can kind of match it up like that. And then once you have it matched up to the both of them, kind of just want to push that into place if you can it should just go right in there you want to make sure it is lined up all ready to go and really you're kind of the parts where you're trying to connect it are going to be like that so once you have it in place here and again it's a little it's easier said than done here and it might take a few tries and again, you also want to be careful of like this portion right here. You want to make sure that's not just getting like violently yanked off by any means. So there we go. Once you have it kind of pushed in like that, and you're kind of going to have to imagine that there's a second spring right there. There's going to be a second one right there. And this works out well enough in all honesty. But once you have that set up, you should be all good. Now I'd recommend you also do a uh, button press as well too, kind of just to test, make sure everything feels fine as it is. Your SL and SR really aren't going to do much until you have everything reconnected properly. So if those feel a bit squishy or they're not like connecting, that's normal, at least for now. So at this point here, what we can do is we can take our battery, pop it in like so, and you can grab your antenna and kind of route it along the edge here. So where it originally went, and then here, you wanna kind of pop it in like that. So you're kind of doing a few things at once, but it should work in the end. You should have your proper connectivity. You wanna make sure like you're not, you don't wanna like, like pinch or damage this thing. Now, the last thing for actually connecting up the battery here, uh, the technique that I, I typically use here is you want to look at the connector and there's going to be two notches that are going to be at the bottom and those two notches are going to be what is supposed to connect to the battery connector. So it's supposed to be like facing the motherboard, you know? So there's going to be a connector right here. And what you want to do, at least what I do, is I kind of just get it lined up and it might be a little bit difficult the first few tries you do it. I kind of just get it lined up right there, just like just above, make sure it's touching. And then once you get it all lined up and ready to load, you can really just kind of come on top with your spudger, give it a little bit of pressure from above, and it connects in just beautifully like that. So there we go. Now for clasping all this together, we are going to have to remove the Phillips Zero. And we're going to go back over to the Tri-Wing, our good old proprietary that at least Nintendo tries to throw on us. We're going to go to the Tri-Wing because we are going to be closing this thing up. So for this here, what I like to do, is I kind of look at it like this and kind of line up the Joy-Con rail like so. A little bit something like that and it, you, you kind of have to feel it out. Once you get all felt out, and this might feel a little bit odd because of like the 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 motor and such there, so you might have to fight with the uh, fight with the divider itself. And if you have to move it around a little bit to accommodate, that's fine. But either way, when to get all loaded in, you should be able to get it nice and sealed. All the buttons should work. You should be able to make a proper connection. Your light should be lighting up. And at that point, I mean, that looks great. Look at that. 
Look at that. That looks awesome. I actually haven't seen one of these, uh, like, translucent. Like, I thought the, uh... I thought the gray would be more obvious, but it's not, and that's cool. Like, it's not like completely translucent, but it, it looks, this looks really nice, at least in person here. So now, uh, the very last thing is to buckle this thing up so we can take all the screws, all four of the, uh, the tri-wings, and just start screwing them into place. You know, it's going to be really funny. Just watch when either during this tutorial or right after I'm done recording all this, I end up finding that spring somewhere. That or I'm going to find it in a few weeks. There, there's no in between. We'll see, I guess. But so far, this is actually working fine on one spring. It will just bug me internally. So yeah, upon checking everything, it all seems to pass my test so far. I think that is all good to go. Perfect. All right. So we now have our right Joy-Con all done up correctly. So now at this point, we can go ahead and grab our left Joy-Con and look at that stark difference right there between the two. So we're now going to be modifying this one and we're going to reshell it. So I'm going to put that one over and we're going to be working on this. So for this here, uh, this is going to be a little bit different as well too, uh, because I'm going to be switching over to a D-pad which will be great. So I got my buttons on hand. I got all of this here and we're going to do about the same thing. We're going to flip this over and there's going to be the four, of course, lovely tri wing screws. They're going to just have to unscrew real quick. Just like before, I'd recommend you kind of turn it around here. If you can see that, come up to the top, kind of do a little bit of a turnkey turnkey right there and go around the bottom turnkey as well and there we go that is what we are looking at so there we go uh, the first thing I would recommend here as I've said before is you come over to where the battery is at and you just gently disconnect it like so then you can go ahead grab your spudger or whatever you're gonna use come right over to where this notch is for the battery and kind of just gently lift it. And there we go. This one kind of jumped out at me because I have removed it before. So here, you're gonna just have to kind of remember where the orientation of these screws are at. Uh, otherwise, I mean, you could just rewatch the video as well too. So it's gonna be a few things that we can do here. Uh, first of which being Let's go ahead and remove the two, actually there's gonna be three gold screws. So in the top left and the bottom right, there's gonna be gold screws. And then there's going to be a gold screw down at the bottom. And we need to switch over to our Phillips because that's what we need. And we can begin unscrewing these. All right, awesome. So we have that removed. Now you want to kind of flip that over very gently. And there's going to be this ribbon that we can disconnect. And as you can see, this ribbon is much longer than the one that we had before. I'll kind of bring this down a little bit. It's much longer. So what you can do is kind of come over here, release the clasp, and disconnect that. So there we go. And now at this point, I can even do a little bit of a modification right there. But either way, let's uh, see how we're going to handle ourselves. So this clasp, I'd recommend you disconnect. Because we can do a good amount of work here. If I can, there we go. We'll disconnect it. Be careful to not break it. And this one down here, we're going to do the same thing. Except this one, you clasp it from, well, unclasp it from behind. It's kind of going to go there. Disconnect pull that out. So there we go. So at this point, we can actually kind of just our motherboard part right here, we can kind of just put it to the side. And I'm actually going to focus on these two right here and just knock them out of the way because we can get two pieces of plastic done really fast right here. So let's go ahead and focus on the bottom. I like to do bottom, middle, top. That's how I do it. So here we're going to focus on this. There's going to be a single silver screw 
hopefully y'all can see, a single silver screw. It's gonna go here, remove that screw. That is what we need to remove. So I'm going to remove the Joy-Con rail, and you wanna be careful with that button. You wanna remove that button, and we no longer need the old stock piece anymore. So now at this point, you can start preparing by getting your shell ready. So we got our shell right there. And we're going to transfer the button over here. And there we go. The button transfer is complete. I'm just gonna keep that over to the side because just like before, we are going to be replacing the SL and the SR buttons on here. And there's gonna be two gold screws. So there's one, and there's two, and that's just going to make everything go everywhere. Awesome, we're just making a big mess here. There we go, we move those out of the way. And from here, I'm not going to be removing uh, the sync button, but I did get some nice kind of smoke translucent uh, SL and SR buttons. So I'm gonna do the same thing as before. I'm just going to gently remove the both of these here. There's that. There's that. And you just go through the process of swapping these buttons over, which is pretty simple. So now once those have been transitioned over, we can go ahead, move this piece back over here. And from here, we can take our two gold screws. So here we go, we have one gold screw that's going to go in place. We have a second gold screw that should also go in place. All right, and as you can see, we have our new kind of more translucent SL and SR buttons. We can get rid of the old ones. From here, we can start moving this back over. Again, I need to put this back in the right place. And now with all that done, we have our button there to disengage. We have all of this set up. So we can just move this over as per usual. And there's going to be exactly one screw that we need to finish this part up. So we just grab our silver screw, screw in. That's it. So the bottom piece with the Joy-Con rail is now complete. We can put that all over to the side because we don't need it for now. Next stop is going to be this piece right here. This is going to contain our ZL button. And just like before, there's gonna be two springs underneath this that we, we definitely know about here. So I kind of do the same thing where I kind of come over and I do a bit of a turnkey motion over on this side with the spudger. Be very careful with the springs here. We don't want to lose any more. I'm going to put them over there. It's all good. We have our SL, and we have one silver screw that is holding this button in. So we're just going to unscrew that. The whole ribbon comes out, and we can remove this because we're now going to bring our own. So this is thankfully pretty stop and swap where we just go in like so. Actually, it has to be that way, excuse me. We just do that. We go in here, we screw that in. Once it's notched in properly, the button is working, that's all good. So now, because I hate these things here, I just hate the springs, we're gonna do about the same thing. It's gonna be the same logic where these springs are supposed to meet here with these two nubs that are on the bottom of SL. That's where they're supposed to be located. And they are supposed to be inside of this plastic here where these two parts are. So it looks over something like that. This one's a little bit difficult, but you kind of have to, again, you have to line up and you're kind of connecting this piece right here. It has to kind of click in place. So there's a lot of things you need to do at once, but let's just see. So we got to do that. All right, so here we go. Pretty much I have the springs loaded up but once, nope. And by the way, when I'm talking about like what to put this on, there's kind of like, you're kind of putting it a little something like that, if you all are able to see. 
It's a little bit difficult to explain here and kind of show, but I'm, I'm doing the best I can in regards to it. It's just the Joy-Con's a little bit of a beast. All right, so I kind of had to push it in there, but once you got it all done, again, that's, that's how it should look. You got a spring right there. You got a spring right there. You got it all pushed in. It should be working just fine. So if that's done, congratulations. You have pretty much two thirds of the controller done. So we can put that piece over to the side. And here we go, we can work with the rest of this, which is thankfully not as much as the right controller. Again, if you have gotten to this point, you're following this, you've already finished up with the right Joy-Con, the left Joy-Con is going to be easier. Uh, so on here, we're not going to disconnect the rumble motor just like we did before or didn't do, uh, but we can go ahead and release the clasps here. This one is going to be for the analog stick. So just release that in advance. We're also gonna have one here for some of the buttons. You can release that one in advance as well too, because we are gonna to have to disconnect that. Might as well disconnect it for now. And this one I'm not gonna disconnect yet just because we're gonna unscrew this. So that was needed to disconnect because check this out, we need to move that in order to remove these two screws. So here is one screw and this is a gold screw. The next gold screw is right here. And there we go. So now when you remove this here, your analog stick, we should be all good. And you can replace that if you want to. I'm not going to because I've already done that. And there's also gonna be this like black adhesive piece that you need to transfer over. So make sure you keep that on hand. Now, next up on here, uh, we are going to need to get rid of we can either do these parts or we can do the motherboard. I'm actually gonna do the motherboard just to make this a little bit easier, so to speak. But there's gonna be two screws in the top right and the bottom left. If you're looking at it this way, there's going to be two screws. These are silver. There we go. So now at this point, you can actually you are going to have to remove this. And once that's been removed, you can take out the board itself and transfer it over there. That's all good. And now next up here, we're going to have to do the same with these boards. So there's going to be this button, the L button. There's again, a spring. You want to be very careful. Make sure you don't lose this spring. I just removed that. We're going to put that to the side. There's going to be these three screws that we need to remove. They kind of all need to go at the same time. So there's the first screw, second screw, and the third screw. All right, and you'll see that these are like connected with the same ribbon. So you need to make sure they all go together there. Now at this point, we can go ahead and start transferring over our buttons. So I'm gonna move some stuff over and I need to get our bottom or our top piece, excuse me. It's gonna look a little something like that. There we go. So now at this point, let me start transferring some of our buttons. I'm not gonna go into too much detail with this part here. I'm kind of just showing it as a formality, but again, just transferring the buttons should be easy enough here. Now the only difference for me is going to be because I am using a D-pad, uh, I'm just gonna have to make sure the orientation is gonna be the same as, as it is here. So I'm gonna pop that into place, make sure it looks like that. And again, you'll be able to like see and tell if it's all working properly or not. But either way, it looks like all of our buttons have been transferred over now. Uh, so what we can do is we can start getting all of the rest of the components back in here. And with the first one, I would say here being this right here. So we're going to just have to move this over carefully. And again, up here, it's going to be the three silver screws. So that's what we're going to be using. And because this one is a little weird, uh, even I noticed one thing that helps is to kind of just at least 
get everything in kind of sort of place and screw it in at least a tiny bit. So you have the three screws in place there. Uh, and then from there, you can just work on getting them tightened. And there we go. Once we have all of that set up, we are all good. So I'd say we could also grab our right trigger or our left one, excuse me, I'm getting everything mixed up here, but our L button. And again, you're gonna wanna make sure you have the spring kind of put on that stopper right there and lodge it into place. And you can just push it like that. I mean, make sure it stays inside, but you are all good at that point. So now here, we're going to bring over a few other pieces. So this is going to be our adhesive that would be for the analog stick. And this is going to have to go underneath the ribbon. And once you have it in, it should go a little something like that. That should all be okay. We can then work on bringing the motherboard over, I would say here, just to eliminate that. So we can kind of move this over, get it in like so. Make sure your motor, your rumble motor is lodged in place there. And if that comes about, you could just load that back in. It's a little bit odd as well too, working with a transparent one like this, but oh well, pretty much once you have all that sorted, you can work on getting a few screws loaded up. So from here, again, we're going to use the top right and bottom left. This is going to be for the silver screws first. So top right should go right here. There we go. Bottom left, if you're looking at it at least this way, it's going to go right here. And one thing you want to kind of be careful of is you want to make sure, well, that's going to keep coming off, I guess. I'm just going to put that to the side. But you want to make sure you're not tightening it up a ton because if you tighten it up too much, your buttons might not be super responsive. But this is where it helps do kind of a quick button check or button test. And mine all seem to be okay so far. So I think that should be fine. That should be bearable there. Next up, we can go ahead and work on getting the analog stick reinstalled. So you will need to move the ribbon and then you'll need to pop the analog stick into place. It really only goes one way. If the adhesive is coming out, you'll just have to work on getting that back in, which is not a huge deal. Now, once you have this all set up in place here, just go ahead and recommend kind of begin screwing this here. Just at least get one of the screws installed properly so you can get this in place. I'd say that's all good and secure now. Nothing really to mess with at that point. And we're going to do the same up top here. This one, remember, is going to be underneath the ribbon. So you are going to have to move this ribbon back for the minus button and start installing this as well. So now that we have those in place, I think that's all good there should all be fine on that front. We can go ahead, move this back in, like I've shown a few times now, because this one just keeps wanting to pop out tonight. And now I'd say we're pretty close to wrapping up here. We really just need to get our ribbons in place. Now make sure all your clasps are open and ready to load in some ribbons and we can start attaching things. So first of all, I'm going to attach the minus button right here. And this is where it definitely helps again to have, here we go, definitely helps to have uh, some tweezers on hand. You can clasp that. There's also a marking there that shows where you should be connecting to. Next up, we can also go ahead, grab our analog stick, plug it in like that. And let me go ahead to clasp that down. That should all be okay at that point. I think we're all good there. 
We can also go ahead and now grab our battery here. Or not battery. Yeah, our battery holder, actually. That would still be accurate. This one's going to be one of the harder ones just because uh, it's so thin here. What you can do here is, again, just the same thing where you make sure the clasp is all ready. You get that all plugged in here. So like any of the others here, we're just going to have to make sure this is in place properly. Mine's a little bit crooked right now. This one, again, just because it's so small, I would say this is one of the more difficult ones. So there we go. Once we have that all loaded up there, yet again, we can just clasp it shut. We should be all good. So that should pretty much be ready for prime time. And this button just keeps, this button just does not want to stay on this here, unfortunately. And I'd say the last two that we can get set up here would be connectors for here. This would be for your Joy-Con rail. So we got one right here. We got one right here. So what you can do right here is get this all loaded up. You want to carefully get it in. And then once it's all ready, you can clasp it shut either with a finger or anything else. Really, whatever's gonna close it and get it to work. It's funny because this was just clasping on me. Now it won't, but it looks like that will be okay. Now if I just bring this to a close, there we go. So we got that. And this last one here also needs to be clasped. So we could do the exact same thing. We're just going to get this one load it in here and what i'm actually doing is i'm uh, kind of doing this backwards in a way as this looks like it'll work a little bit easier for me you see kind of got to find whichever angle will work for you and it might take a few tries but So once all that is set up, you can then close that up and you should be okay there. So now at this point, we kind of need to just get this all buckled up, plus uh, add in the button here. So again, I mean, I've shown this several times now, but it looks like kind of just take the button, put it in place, close it up like that. You can then transfer this over. So now, thankfully that button shouldn't be going anywhere now that it has some extra pressure on top of it. And it will just kind of fit in like so. Uh, but we need to put in the three gold screws that should then secure the battery piece down. So one of them should go right here. Another one is going to go right here. And a third one is going to go down here and there we go that is about it so the very last thing before we buckle this all up is we need to put in the battery yet again so here just like i showed before there's going to be kind of two notches and those two notches need to be towards the motherboard and what i like to do is i like to take this wire and i like to kind of get it directly on top of how it's supposed to go and there we go that is perfect and once I have that, I take my plastic spudger and I just apply a little bit of pressure and really just put it in place. That time it didn't pop, interesting. But once that's all done, I mean, that's it. There's nothing else to really do. So you kind of put in the battery like so. Now to close all this up here, you're kind of gonna have to, first of all, we can also check and see. There we go, we got the buttons. But you kind of just kind of go loaded in like that. Kind of have to feel around a bit. Kind of have to look at different angles. But once you have all that, there we go. We get that click. Seems to go together. All the buttons seem to be working just fine. Everything seems to feel great. It's past the initial test, at least the initial field test. So here, if you're ready to close up shop, 
you're pretty much all ready and good to go, assuming that everything is going to be working properly. And I would definitely encourage that uh, you check everything, make sure that it is working properly, and make sure this is all good. And again, the very last thing to wrap and cap this all off is we're going to put the four tri-wing screws back from whence they came. And once that's all done, then we are all good to go. Now, one thing I also just realized, these, uh, these kits do typically come with their own screws. If you want to, you can certainly do that. Again, I'm personally not going to be doing that. I'm just using the original screws that came with everything, uh, but you're more than welcome to swap them out. It does make it easier, so you at least don't need a tri-wing in the future. But to me, since I have one, it doesn't really make a difference. All right, cool. So now we have that all sorted. We are all ready to go with that one. And let me grab the other one here and check that out. That is beautiful. We have our two Joy-Cons, or our pair of Joy-Cons here, all translucent, kind of smoke color, I guess. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but either way, these look much better than I expected. So there you go. That is it. If you made it to the end, hopefully you either found this entertaining or it helped out or both. And that is how you do a Joy-Con shell swap. Now, it's not the hardest thing in the world. There are going to be parts that you're going to be fumbling because everything in here is so small and there's just so many ribbons for a controller as well, too. Uh, but it's certainly attainable to do this. Uh, I would recommend, though, if you've never done one of these before, allocate like two hours of time for a pair just to make sure you got everything. But you can probably knock it out in about an hour. Now, of course, to test these out, I would recommend, you know, go play with them, use them, all that stuff. But there's a couple things I'm going to show you all as well. Well too. All right, so the first thing I'd recommend doing when you get these set up is to connect them physically to your switch and make sure that they actually pair properly. You could also go over to your controller settings and make sure they show up both attached to the console as well as wirelessly. This here is going to be really important just to make sure that wireless connectivity is working fine and there's nothing wrong with the Joy-Con rail itself. I'd also recommend going into controllers and sensors under your system settings and update your controllers if you haven't already. Finally, you could also double check your motion controls and your control sticks and calibrate them if needed, especially if you have replaced your sticks. The last recommendation I would have here is since you have physically changed the colors of your Joy-Cons, you might also want that to reflect on the software side as well too, like you're seeing here with my white Joy-Cons that I had reshelled. You can actually do that quite easily, and I have a tutorial showing that as well too too. So if you have changed your Joy-Con shells to a completely different color, I would definitely recommend following that. All right. So really that is about it for this video. I've shown you pretty much everything you need to go to get up and running on here. There are going to be links to everything down below in the description if you want to check out some of this stuff. But yeah, I think that's about it. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too.